Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, you've been watching me work on this Alice Chalmers WD. Uh, we got the motor out. We've been doing uh, a lot of strip down on that, trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, so if, just stay tuned. We're going to flip over a time lapse. We're going to tear this motor apart, kind of see what we got going on inside, uh, see what we can find. All right, guys, working on this uh, WD. It's got the uh, power crater pistons in it and the WD 45 rod, so it's been, uh, or crank, so it's been updated. The problem I've got is it's really hard to turn over by hand. And uh, the reason I tore it down is it's making a noise whenever the starter was uh, spinning it. And I thought it had something to do with the flywheel clutch area, and that all turned out to be okay. So let me show you what I got. So when I go to turn this, it's pretty free there but right here it gets tough so I don't know right there is really tough so I don't know what I've got going on yet I want to check the clearances on the uh, crank and the uh, rod and main bearings just to see uh, it's obviously been rebuilt at some point but if you got any uh, ideas uh, let me know. Thanks. All right, so you've been watching time lapse for a bit, and uh, I've done a little more work than what's uh, showing up on the video here. Um, I went ahead and pulled off the front cover. Uh, the pulley uh, off the crank, power steering unit, water pump. We've got all that stuff stripped down, and uh, the the crankshaft is still pretty tight. Remember, I rotated it over even after the head and everything was removed. It still was getting in a bind, so I don't know if I've got a spun bearing or what. So I'm going to check into that. I did notice up here on the front of the crank. We've got a speedy sleeve in there. What I'm hearing from some other guys is that should have been uh, knocked off. But uh, So they had a speedy sleeve put on it to seal up where the uh, front main seal in the timing cover is. Um, evidently, the, the crank itself right there is worn enough where it was leaking, so they put one of those on. So anyway, uh, the next step is we're going to flip this engine over and I'm going to go ahead and start pulling off uh, some of the uh, caps. Probably do the mains first. Um, I'd like to see what we've got going on with those and see if we actually do have a bearing this spun. Uh, before I get too far into it, I'm going to go ahead and line up um, some of the timing marks on the front. And... Uh, that way, whenever I take it off and bring the crank back in place, all I have to do is just line up my marks and my distributor and uh, cam gears will already be where they need to be. So anyway, that's where we're at right now. We'll flop back over to the time lapse and watch it, uh, watch it from there.
All right, so you've been watching the time lapse. Lots been going on here. Um, pretty much got the 201 uh, stripped down. It's actually a 226. So we end up having a WD-45 crank and the power crater pistons in it. So we end up with a 226, 226 cubic inch uh, out of that same block that that 201 was originally in. Uh, characteristic that you're gonna note right away on a WD uh, block is that side plate. So the push rods uh, come down through there. Uh, that's the first thing you wanna point out. If you got a late series WD or you th may think it's 45 or what have you, now keep in mind the engine could have been swapped out but according to the serial number on the back of that tractor uh, you should be able to determine what style of uh, block should be on the front side so anyway we've been stripping that thing down found a couple of bearings that were uh, not in the best of shape um, i ended up pulling the liners out of you as you've been watching uh, i tried to clean out the inside and there's all kinds of junk in there and i want to get that out I don't want that going going through my system and it's just nearly impossible to get all of that worked out um, the big hole you see down there in the bottom uh, that is the water cavity between the head uh, and the block and that's where i stuck my hose in earlier when you watched on the uh, time lapse when i was blowing the uh, water in there trying to clean that out did a decent job there's still quite a bit of junk in there however that uh we needed to get out so i don't want that running through my pump and radiator and all that uh here's my parts anytime you're tearing the engine down make sure you get things in order you need to keep your lifters with the same push rod uh on the same rocker uh, of course your bearing caps those are pretty obvious um and then i made a i made a little diagram also just so i don't get messed up with how many shims and things are in place now the shims may or may not matter. I'm gonna use plastic gauge when I uh, torque my bearings down anyway. Uh, so that's gonna tell me whether or not I have the proper clearances. So maybe adding shims may not. It may be right where we need it to be. I highly doubt it though. Uh, when I turned the crank over by hand, it was pretty tight. Uh, felt like it was getting in a bind. So I've either got some rod bearings that were tight, some of the caps or the main journals. Uh, won't really know for sure. I should have probably plastic gauged them before I went ahead and stripped it down, but I just felt like for sure I had a spun bearing somewhere and I did not. I had a couple bearings that had some nicks in it. Uh, the crank had already been turned 10 thousandths from what I could tell by the bearings. So on the back side of your bearing here, uh, that's the thrust bearing, but you see that 0 0.010. So that's a 10 thousandths um, oversized bearing that's been put in there and ends up the uh, rod and the mains are the same so at some point probably when this thing was uh, rebuilt they had to turn the crank and so there you have it crank looks great and they're, they're not going to have to do anything to that the pistons are probably fine they're going to get new rings at minimum uh and be honest with you it, it may be cheaper for me just to get a rebuild kit and have everything i need and just put it in there time you start piecing things out um maybe cheaper i did notice and i don't know if this makes any difference or not but the notch on cylinder let's see there's the back so that's four three two number two cylinder uh the notch was facing uh forward all the other notches were facing backward I looked at the top of the piston typically you've got some sort of arrow on there and there's no indication from what i can see now, when I clean the uh, carbon deposits up, it may be a different story. I may see something right away. So um, I need to figure that out, get that thing back in properly when we rebuild. So like I said, I may end up with all new pistons and the whole nine yards and just have to reuse the rods. So we'll just play that by ear and uh, see what I can get in the kit. So next step uh, on the block itself is I've got to get the cam bearings out. They definitely, just by the looks of it, were not replaced. I don't believe, anyway, that they were replaced when when the uh, main uh, bearings were replaced and the crank turned. They just look old. Uh, they're not worn or anything. They're really in pretty decent shape. But 
if you're doing a rebuild, I mean, we're talking like $28 for those three bearings from what I've seen. It'd be crazy not to replace those. So we'll do that. The uh, lifters looked great. I uh, didn't see really any wear on the bottom of them when I pulled them out. Uh, man, that's a there's a lot of cred right in that corner right there. Look at all that. So probably, I'll probably take this thing to the power washer um, and clean it. Really, everything else on it's not bad. I made that hot tank uh, several videos back. I just don't feel like that it's worth the time right now to hot tank it. It's not like it's full of a bunch of shavings because we had something that failed internally. We just have that crud on the inside. So probably just use a power washer and get that cleaned out of there. So really that's the only two things left to do. Pull the uh, cam bearings out and then power wash. And then we'll uh, really just at that point be waiting on parts. Um, I do have the, uh, let's see, that'd be the rear uh, seal to replace. So we'll be pulling this off. And uh, there's a real nice video, guys, here on YouTube that you need to check out if you're doing one of these on how to do your pan gasket and how to do that felt. So I've watched that. And I'm going to follow that uh, procedure. And we should be pretty good as far as leaks go. So anyway, hey, appreciate you watching. Uh, hit like and subscribe, and stay tuned for the rebuild on this uh, Alice Chalmers WD-226. Uh, and uh, hit like and subscribe, like I said. Leave a comment if you got any kind of questions. Let me know, and we'll follow up with those. Until next time.